Hi, I'm Merit. Welcome to the second lecture on dynamic programming. Today I will show you how to solve three quite similar problems and we will talk about the main difference between problems where we optimize some value and we count ways to do something. And that difference is double counting, an issue that makes counting problems much harder. The first problem is combination sum. We are given the target value n and some allowed numbers. We are asked to count ways to write n as the sum of those numbers with allowed repetitions and well, the order also matters. For example, if the target value is 4 and the allowed numbers are 1, 2 and 3, some possibility is 1 plus 1 plus 2, which is equal to 4, but also some other possibility is 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is also 4. All the ways here are written on the right, on the left, and there are seven of them, so the answer is seven. Like I told you in the previous lecture, it's good to think about dp as what is important so far. In previous problems it was what we need to know when we are at some position, what we need to remember about previous choices, like maybe the number of jumps. Here, after we already write some part of the sum, let's say one and two, it isn't important how many numbers there are, because we don't care about it in any way. We care about the sum. So here we know the sum is 3. And this suggests that this should be dimension of dp, the state. Since we are counting the number of ways to write n as something, then dp will be int dp of some dimension, state, and that int denotes the number of weights. dp of i will be the number of weights that we are at st state i, and i denotes the sum. So i is the sum so far. Then we can in some way initialize that. I will say dp of 0 is 1, and then what transitions we can make. If we have sum equal to 10, and the allowed numbers are 1, 2, and 3, then I can get sum 11, 12 or 13. Let's see some implementation of that. The first code is quite standard. We initialize dp of 0 as 1. There is one way to get the sum 0. This is just empty sum. And then we compute every next dp of i. If we want to get the sum i, then we iterate over the last number x. We can even simulate that with our example dp of 0 is initially 1, then every next one is 0, up to dp of 4, and every next one is computed as the sum of three previous values, quite similarly to Fibonacci numbers, where this will be 1, this will be the sum of dp of i minus 1 and minus 2, which is 2, this one will be 4, the sum of previous three numbers, and this one will be 7. The second approach is a bit different. It's so-called forward or push dynamic programming, where we already know value dp of i and we use it to update future values. Mm. We again start from the ri 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Then we start from i equal to 0 this time. We use 1 to increase future values. We know that there is some number of ways to get the sum equal to i, and we consider next element to add to update future values. Uh, for this one, we'll update this 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, every next three values, because in our example, nums are 1, 2, and 3. Then we are at this i, the value is again 1. We update next three values to two and one, and then we are at i equal to two, we increase future values, and finally here we increase dp of n by this value, seven. Computed values are the same, it's just that the method is different. In the next lecture we'll see more examples of this forward dp. The next problem, coin change, is quite similar. We are given the nominations of coins and the target amount n, what is the minimum possible number of coins used? The main difference is we previously had to count ways and here we are finding the minimum possible number of coins. 
for n equal to 11 and coins 1 to 5, I can get 5 plus 5 plus 1. This way I get the sum 10, the, the sum 11. And I use three coins, so the answer is three. It's impossible to use fewer coins. In the next one, I can use three plus three, three plus three, which gives me the answer two. Again, you can think about a greedy approach because this is optimization problem. And if you every time take the biggest possible coin for n equal to six, maybe you would want to take four first and then the remaining value is two. You need to make one plus one. This is not optimal. This means the greedy doesn't work here. And the code will be very similar and the solution will be very similar to the previous one. It's just that dp of i, instead of being the number of ways to get this sum, it is the minimum possible number of coins. Let's see comparison of two implementations. I took the first code and slightly modified it. The initialization is different. I can't leave everything to be zero because then I will think that dp of n is zero, that zero coins are enough to get the sum of n. But if we know uh, to compute dp of i, I iterate over the last coin and I, fi I find the minimum over dp of i minus that last coin, i minus x is the sum so far before that last coin, plus one, because I'm using one more coin. I could also put that plus one outside the bracket, but uh, I mean, I could find the minimum over dp of i minus x and only then add one, but it doesn't matter. All in this code and the previous one, what you should be careful for is of course out of boundaries error. This is pseudocode, but in actual implementation, you need to check whether i minus x isn't negative. Plus here we initialize all the values to infinity and the sum equal to zero, you can get with zero coins. This problem is certainly the hardest in this lecture. It's again coin change, but this time we are counting the number of ways. We are given the nominations and the target amount n. What is the number of ways to make up that amount? This time though, we say the order of numbers doesn't matter. matter. What matters is multi set of coins. If you're in a shop and you want to choose a bunch of coins to pay exactly n, then the order of them doesn't matter. You don't give those coins one by one. And this is the difference from two problems ago, from combination sum, where we were, we were writing n as the sum of numbers and 1, 1, 2 was counted separately from 1, 2, 1. Here, for target value 5 and coins 1, 2, 5, there are four ways that I wrote on the left. If we would count every order separately, then instead of just 2 to 1, I would also count uh, two, 2 to 1, then also 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, uh, and similar thing for 2, 1, 1, 1, there would be four ways. Here I have 3, 4, 1, and 1, the total would be 9. But this is a different problem, the order doesn't matter, and the answer is 4. If we just applied the same dynamic programming that for some already chosen elements remembers the sum, here sum equal to 3, we would get the issue of double counting or over counting. We would separately count way with 2 to 1, 2, 1, 2 and 1, 2, 2 because all of them give us the sum n in mm, position dp of n. We need to change something. And now not only the sum matters, we cannot say dp of i is the number of ways to get sum i and that's it, because uh, we don't want to double count any state, any solution. Mm. And not to count those three separately, I will say that I want to only allow one of them. What makes sense is to count the lexicographically sort sorted way. This is a unique representation of all of those. I want to not allow those two. Then in our already chosen elements, not only the sum matters, but also the last element. 
and the next, next element cannot be smaller than that. This time we'll write, say that dp of s sum and k, let's instead of k use last, this is the number of ways to get the sum of s, where this is the last used coin. If we number coins from 0 to k minus 1, where k is the number of them, then the memory complexity of our dp this time is of n times k, s is up to n, and last is up to k minus 1, and every state with some sum, sum sum and last, we should iterate over the last coin taken maybe, we'll think about that in a moment, but the trivial approach here would lead to time complexity and k square if you want to iterate over the last coin, but it won't be necessary and we'll get n times k. If the state is sum so far and the last coin, then let's say last coin had index 2, the next coin can be coin 2, coin 3, 4 and so on. If we choose the next coin to be 2 again, then the new sum is 17 plus the value of that second coin in the array nums, comma, the last coin is still 2, then 3 and so on. From each of n times k states, we consider k transitions. This is why the complexity is nk square. We also, um, yeah, and then at the end we'll say the answer is the sum over dp of n, the target value, and the last coin can be just anything, the sum over all those question marks. How to make the time complexity n times k, though? It's very simple, it's enough to say that from state 17 and 2, you can get to state 17 and 3. You can imagine that last coin is 3, and from that state you will consider cases where the next coin to take is 3 or 4 or whatever else. Then you remove all those transitions and you have only 2. Actually this changes the definition of last coin a little bit. This is not the last coin, but kind of the limit for the coins that you used or you can use. If you used coins 0, 1, 1 and 2, you can say that the last coin is 4 if you aren't going to take smaller coins. If you write it this way and from 17, 3 we can get to either 17, 4 or to 17 plus nums 3, what, is re what represents taking coin 3 now, comma 3, which is the last coin, then we are fine. Every possibility, like taking for example coins 0, then 1, then 1, 2, after that 4, 4 and so on, every possibility like that will be counted. And what is important is it will be counted exactly once when after taking 0, 1, 1, 2, we are in this state, then we don't need to iterate over all those coins that we take next. It's enough to go to state that thinks the last coin so far was free, because we don't want any more coins of index 2, then we'll go to 17, 4, and from that we'll get to that 17 plus nums of 4, comma 4, which, is repre which represents taking coin 4. And this doesn't double count anything, because in that graph of transitions, there is only one path that corresponds to this, this uh, multiset of coins. It must go like this. If from 17 to we go with the other transition to this state, that would represent taking another 2. When we have already 0, 1, 1 and 2, then either the next coin is 2, in that case we go to that state where we still can take 2s, otherwise if it's not a 2, it's, if it's 3+, plus, then we go to the next, step, the next state below, 17 and 3. 
in the graph of transitions there should be exactly one path and then there is no overcounting. One more thing for this problem is that you can get memory O of n like for those instead of having dimension k you go coin after coin and for every next coin from 0 to k minus 1 you update dp of i then dp of i would be the number of ways to get this sum i with coins considered so far actually this is very similar to knapsack and we'll talk about it in one of future lectures but yeah the memory can all often be optimized by one dimension but what we described so far has both time and memory complexity of n times k the number of states is n times k and we have just two transitions you might notice that we actually did that forward dp or um, push dp it's also possible with pull or standard take from previous values dp where dp of i last is computed from previous states then dp to that 17 2 you need to go from 17 minus nums of 2 nums of 2 comma 2 or from 17 1 it's the same thing there are just two ways to implement that if you want to try this problem or one of previous two there will be links in the description or in the pinned comment the first comment below the video so you can try to implement this yourself I mentioned already that the second value of the state that last coin isn't really the last coin it's our limit and there is a concise way to now define the state of dp dp of s k is the number of ways to get the sum of coins already used equal to s where we used only first k denominations from that array nums we were allowed to use the, to only use first k values and then there are indeed just two transitions from every state from this lecture you should remember that in dynamic programming problems you must think what is important so far after we made some decisions after we already chose some numbers or in graphs after we got to this vertex in easy cases it was just the sum of numbers of already chosen coins in harder one it was also that last element and the other thing is think whether your solution will not double count some state like 1 2 2 and 2 1 2 those shouldn't be counted separately but our first solution did count them separately and the answer would be bigger optimization problems are easier this way if we want to minimize the number of coins used or maximize or something like that it doesn't hurt you that in that graph of transitions between states there were two paths leading to the final solution to the state because those would be counted twice in the program that counts the number of ways if we just minimize something it doesn't matter if the minimum of 5 and 5 is still 5 but 1 plus 1 is not 1 so be careful about that and that's it see you next dynamic programming lecture bye bye